Hi, and welcome to our first lecture covering the senses. If you're looking at senses in general, we'll be talking mainly about touch, taste, sight, hearing, smell, and then uh, equilibrium, which would be balance. Now, the sense of touch gets pretty complicated. You've got pressure receptors, touch receptors, pain nerve endings, sensitivities to temperature. So all these would be located in the skin, and we talk more about in the integumentary system lecture. For each of these, we'll be walking through, in our second lecture, um, smell and taste. Third lecture, we'll cover hearing and equilibrium, and playing on the fourth lecture, covering vision. The types of receptors that exist, these are general, are chemo, noci, thermo, mechano, and photo. Chemo receptors are sensitive to chemical changes, it means chemical binds to them, and alters them in some way and that's what starts off you know the action potential that will travel down there a smell is a chemoreceptor it's a chemical that binds to olfactory receptors in your nose taste is a chemoreceptor nociceptors are pain thermo obviously hot and cold mechano would be sensitive to some kind of mechanical pressure um, so pressure receptors touch receptors hearing is actually a mechanoreceptor you physically vibrate the eardrum and some inner ear bones and ultimately fluid of the cochlea and it's a, a mechanical process. Photoreceptors obviously are for photons which are particles of light so that's your retina there. And the somatic or body senses we break down into three groups extero, propio, and viscero. Exteroceptive are located externally touch, pressure, pain, temperature, things you'd find in your skin. Propio or deep in muscles and tendons it gives you feedback about how much pressure you're putting on your muscles or your tendons during stretching or physical activity. Um, viscerosceptive are coming from your organs. So this lets you know, you know my bladder's full, my stomach's empty, uh, I'm having an appendicitis, you know, something with the viscera or the organ. If you're looking at the skin here, um, you see these free nerve endings. Um, touch receptors, sinian corpuscles, pressure receptors. These are all mechanical. So when you press down on the skin just lightly, you press on this touch receptor, and that's what causes the nerve to fire. So they're sensitive to mechanical pressure. Same thing with one deeper. Go back one. If you were putting a lot of pressure down here in the dermis, someone was squeezing your arm, you'd be able to tell. Stretch receptors seen here in the muscle, when they stretch or expand or uncoil, I guess you'd say, to a certain point, then the nerve fires. And that, of course, sends information to the spinal cord and ultimately to the brain, gives you feedback about that muscle. Uh, they can shut down during fight or flight response. Um, so sometimes you can tear muscles, even break bones, things like that, from over contraction. But fight or flight also shuts down pain. So these are Instances where you're really scared, you know, something like that. Our temperature sensitivities, warm receptors, are sensitive. Um, anything above 25 Celsius, which is 77 Fahrenheit, you start getting up around 113, 115, 120 range in Fahrenheit scale, and it just turns to pain. It's no longer, ooh, this is warm. So we got a pretty narrow range there. Cold works the same way. You know, once you get down below 10 Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit, if you jump in water that's, say, you know, 34 degrees, it just hurts. Um, it's, it's no longer, you know, this is just something chilly. So the people that went in the water the night of the Titanic, they would not have went in thinking, oh, this water's cold. Uh, they would go in thinking, you know, this is painful. Because below the 10 or above the 45, you know, these, these vary, of course. Some people can stand much warmer temperatures. You know, your average sauna or your average hot tub would be around 108, maybe, Fahrenheit. But some people could stand it up to 115 or even higher. So this is just a norm. Pain itself is pretty complicated. And the best measure we have for pain, really, is just a scale. Um, you go in, a patient's hurting, you ask them, What's your pain? On a scale of 1 to 10, you mark it down and you trust it because it's an interpretation. It's a cerebral cortex that's going to judge 
how much does it hurt, where is it coming from, and pain gets pretty interesting. You can see people who've lost limbs um, who claim that the limb they lost is hurting, these phantom pains, and pain can be referred. So you can have pain in the, le the left arm from, say, a heart attack. Um, acute pain fibers, typically really rapid pain, myelinated, these are conducted very quickly. Chronic or much more slowly, tends to last longer um, than something like that would be acute. We'll take a look at a few of common places pain gets referred. So, for example, here's say the person's having a heart attack. You, know, you can have pain radiating down the left arm. Most everything is about where you would expect it. You know, your appendix is sitting right here in this region, so appendicitis is referred to that region. Um, others can, can vary. You can see, you know, like ureter pain can run to the insides of the legs. Um, pain from your lungs can radiate through the neck and the trapezius muscle. So it can go different places. But most of the time it's located roughly where it's hurting, for example. You know, that's pretty much right where the ovaries would be in a female, so ovarian pain is pretty localized. That will end lecture one and lecture two we will start with taste and smell. We'll cover those two.